doesn't get any better than bow hunting. I love the challenge it puts on me. I love these intense moments where you have to be clutch and make a shot. And I did it right there. All right, headed down to hunt mule deer. Early September. Um, and this is a different type of terrain than I'm used to. This is a sagebrush country with a bunch of coolies and canyons, ribbon cliffs, fairly open. We're really excited. There's some good deer that come from this unit. Got our bows, everything we need in our truck, camp at the truck, or we can run overnight trips into the back country. So uh, we're stoked, gonna get after some good mule deer. Brand new unit to me. First time being in the unit, so just trying to get a feel for it, learn the unit, learn where the deer like. We started up this morning and it, it's been good. We spotted a group of bucks up on the top of the hill and one pretty nice four point. They're ways off. We were watching them for a while and thought we were gonna get a play and then we did see a hunter right below him work up and spook him out of there. But, but we're really gonna live and die behind our glass and master vantage points and see if we can't turn up some good bucks. So I got my good buddy, Dan Hevern with me. He's got a tag as well. Found a little low vantage point. We don't know if we're really focusing up on the mountains right now, if we're down here in the sage. So we're just kind of piecing it together and it looks good so far. Day one, we'll figure it out. He does just have a pile of velvet hanging off him. <laughs> All right, middle of the day play. <laughs> it's hot. We got a buck just right up here on the hill. There's a little scattered timber, a little bit of trees and bushes up there. We couldn't tell what he was for the longest time, but he finally stood up in the sun and walked out and fed around. So we got a really good look through through the scopes at him. And I mean, he's a good buck. He's a good four point. He's got velvet hanging off him, and he's just pretty cool looking right now. So. I think we're gonna roll around, get our elevation on him, and just get a tree in between us and him and just make a play for him, see if we can get in tight, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Put a mark where the buck is, and then we came around to get our elevation on the buck, but we wanna be really um, strategic on the saddle that we choose to go through because we want the wind in our favor and we also want to be at the exact elevation. So if we do come around and he stands, at least we have a shot. So I just, I'm just double checking everything. There's the buck, this is the direction we're facing. I mean, I just kind of double check, you know, take the stupid out of it and just know exactly where the buck is and where we are. Just so you don't make a mistake all the way back here. Onyx is great for that, right? Yes, yeah, it just kind of tells you everything you need to know. Got a buck 
spotted over here on these ribbon cliffs. Um, we've been sitting up here for a couple hours, just kind of on this rock ledge, looking at all this big basins and stuff, and just went for a little walk over the top and ended up looking into these this shadow over here. And it's, there's two bucks over here. One just got up, it's kind of mingling around, and the other bigger bucks kind of you know, hanging tight into the shadows. We still got several hours of light left. Um, so I don't think they're gonna go anywhere. They're not gonna go stand in the sun right now. So I think we're just gonna scamper around this, this hillside and get up, get above them and see if we got a good wind, see if we can shoot them up from the, either up on the cliffs or if we got to roll on the same side of the cliffs he is. So we'll get over there and get it figured out. But pretty nice looking buck, like a three by four, but like a mature, good looking deer. So let's go see what we can do. on the box again they're bedded just really tight to the cliffs so we gotta first of all get our wind right second of all get into position so we're gonna roll back down behind us and then loop around and we've had a really strong wind coming up from behind us most of the day kind of coming into our face so if we stay on this side of the box um, and kind of come up over on top we should be right above them with a, with a pretty good wind grinding hard here, we've been covering a bunch of miles, glassing a bunch of terrain, and turning up some deer and turning up some does and smaller bucks, but it's been rough. But this morning, got out here late morning and I caught a pretty good buck coming around the corner of an edge of a cliff there. So we're gonna go all in, take the bow, try to get up on top of that cliff or maybe circle around and see if we can get eyes on them and maybe get a chance. So uh, this is what it's all about. Let's see if we can't get close. Bohan, I feel about an inch tall right now. God dang it. 
made the play on that buck. I had him right down underneath me. He was like five yards underneath me. Just the buck of my dreams, too. Stickers out each side. And I couldn't come over the top. He got nervous and he was turning his head around. I could tell he was gonna go. And then he busted around the corner and we hustled to the top quietly and I poked over the top and he was right there in bow range. And he was like 20 yards, maybe 25, so close. I drew back and then leaned over the edge of the cliff and I, I didn't even have my pins on him yet. And that buck, he, he spun and turned to go and I just panicked. I got my pins close and jerked my shot off and shot over him. Oh. <sighs> Bow hunting, it'll take you to your lowest lows. I mean, anybody wanna buy a bow? <laughs> uh, he ran across the hillside, and I, you know, 50, 60, 70, he just never stopped again, but Maybe if I wouldn't have shot, he would have stopped. I was just, I could see him starting to roll and I knew like my time was limited and I panicked and just put that pin on him and crushed it. And it uh, didn't work out. Shoot 365 and I, I wait for those moments. You wanna be clutch in those moments of high pressure and put a perfect arrow in that buck. That's what we're trained to do. But the reality of the situation is, is like sometimes circumstances and you just duff one or, you know, you don't get a good opportunity or whatever it is. And I, I mean, I could have not shot and that buck would have bounded away. I wouldn't have felt nearly as bad, but I, I still would have felt pretty bad. But to miss him like that and just, I mean, you make a mistake like that. I know I put in the work, you know, I know I'm a good sound bow hunter. Like I just got to get back to it and just start hunting and find another one and make a play and put a perfect arrow in them, you know. It's the only thing that's going to make this deal feel better. I mean, I can sit and beat myself up over it. I mean, I can quit bow hunting. You know, there's a bunch of options here. <laughs> Not very many good ones. So it's like, you know, just back to the drawing board and try to learn from it and get better. And a buck, he was better today. He lives on, good for him. Big five, six year old buck, double stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and the horns were way too big, way too heavy on that thing. I did not want to carry that all the way out. So, yeah, I mean, he's a big body deer too. I'm looking for a smaller body. So, <laughs> less, Le yeah, less, less antlers. I mean, those antlers, they would have hung up on everything going home. So, we're going to go peer off this cliff, see if we can't find Dan a buck to stock over here. We're into some good deer numbers. Found a good little area back in here where these bucks like, isn't it? Shade. Yeah. It's a cool country. It is. washed my gear, filled up full of food again, and, and uh, drove back down here and hiked in. So I'm solo this trip. I went up this morning, grabbed a vantage point. There's a bunch of deer in this basin over here. So a bunch of bucks too. Just saw another group of them over here, uh, but one that's a pretty nice buck, nice four point, high and tall. I think if you'll give me a chance, I'll make a play, but kind of a challenging stock right now. So just kind of seeing where all these deer end up. So I'll show you where this box at. Okay, go time, a couple hundred yards here. Ditch my pack and close in, see if we can get close. Just as I was getting close, those bucks got up and fed away from me. They're just feeding on the hillside over here. I knew they were gonna change beds. I was just hoping I could make it there before they moved. But... Packed in late last night, 
loaded up my backpack with three days worth of gear and just backpacked in here. Got up this morning, seeing a few deer. I'm kind of looking into the sun this direction into this canyon, but I did see five bucks over here. One's pretty good with a couple extras. And then there's another big mature buck in there that's goofy horn three by four. So we'll see what they end up doing here. They're kind of out in the open by some cliff rocks. I think they're going to bed by, which be a good spot. So I'll show you where they're at. Okay, so I watched those bucks bed down. I like that one with the extras. He's a nice buck, big backs, good frame to him. So I'm gonna go see, they're bedded in a good spot, but I know it's just their first morning bed. But even still, I've got a good wind and he's in a good spot. So I'm gonna start closing in and just see if I can get close, catch him before he gets up again. So it's 9.13 right now. We'll see what we can do. to these bucks. I'm gonna drop my pack here and just move in with my bow. So let's go see if we can make something happen. This is what it's all about right here. I can't believe that came together. Things can just change in an instant when you're bow hunting. Found these bucks this morning, made a really good play. They were in a good spot, had a good wind. I just sat here and waited. I waited for an hour for that buck to stand. I was in the shade, I was shivering a little bit. I was got a little bit cold with the wind in here, just waiting for my opportunity. And he stood up and gave it to me and I put it on him. Made one heck of a shot. God, that feels good. Man, oh man, it just, it doesn't get any better than bow hunting. My second trip down here, I'm solo, able to capture that on film. Let's go check them out. Well, what do we have here? Caked in blood. I absolutely love it with every fiber of my being. I love the, the challenge it puts on me. I love these intense moments where you have to be clutch and make a shot, keep your composure, and I did it right there. All right, here he is. Man, just a beautiful buck. Couldn't be happier, a couple stickers on him. Gosh, and there's not a lot of deer around. They really gotta hunt hard. My name's Brian Barney. I run the Eastman's Elevated podcast. It's a podcast that's all about hunting our public lands. It's do it yourself, paid my dues over the years, and I've learned tricks and tactics that help me harvest these type of bucks and bulls and antelope year after year. Uh, that's the kind of information that I'm sharing with you on the podcast. And along with that, uh, here's some of the great guests that we have on talking about their successful hunts. So another one in the books. 
wanted to make sure you guys knew I was alive. Man, a long pull out of there by myself with a whole deer and camp and everything, but gosh, now I just got them tucked away, got them put in the Yeti. Got some good meat for the family for the year, so we're sitting good. I made it. I'm alive.